Well, I'd just like to talk to you, boss, about a few things I've been seeing around campus, and I'm not quite sure how to process it because of maybe how I feel or because of maybe my training or because of maybe my lack of training. So if you've got time, I'd just like to put it in front of you, and then maybe you can take some time to think it through and get back to me if this isn't a good time. Does that make sense to you? What I'm concerned about is what I'm seeing, especially on Green Street. You know, it's the main thoroughfare affair through our campus. And what I'm noticing a great deal of is that we're having a particular type of constituency or population starting to get heavily involved in the food industry. As you know, from about locusts all the way up to right are predominantly the places that feed our children who go to this campus, as well as the fellow workers who work and earn from our university, as well as some of the townies that come through mainly on the weekends, but of course throughout the week if they're coming to visit their children. The things that I've been noticing since I've been on the third shift is a lot of things, actually. I'm noticing that the Indian population and students are out in full force to the wee hours of the morning, which is a little disconcerting. I'm also noticing how they sort of double time and triple time what we might call in our normal version of high school so society as geeks who might not be the most socially adept. I'm also seeing during the daytime shifts that we have a lot of Hispanics, a lot of Hondurans, a lot of Puerto Ricans, and a lot of Latinos, however they align themselves within those uh, colorful spectrums, involved in food handling and food cooking and basically the culinary arts that feed our kids. So it's a little unusual to me that we have a Korean house, but it's got Hispanic workers in the back. And it's a little unusual to me that our McDonald's is predominantly staffed with that. And it's a little bit odd to me that we have bilinguals sort of slipping into our sandwich houses. And it's also disconcerting to me that when you walk into some of these Chinese shops for bubble tea or food that are doing a little bit of variety of Chinese food, Korean shoes, food, Japanese food, Mongolian food, that what we see is people from those countries who don't speak much English. So what I'm wondering is how do we liaison with Homeland Security and how do we handle when we recognize the truth that on the one hand there are definitely people here from foreign countries who are students here but here's the reality which you may not be aware of but I learned the other day by listening to someone that they are required to have a work authorization. So we have these Chinese hub oriented cars and the only reason I know is because I overheard a homeless man talking who said oh no that's not Japanese that's Chinese and that is definitely not Korean and so I sort of looked up the language myself and now I sort of understand that Chinese is all pictographs whereas Japanese is some pictographs and then some squirrely characters and Korean is much more circles and squares so I'm starting to learn the difference in terms of the language that I see posted in advertising everywhere but what I am concerned about is how linguistically these people got here. I realize that there are subgroups and sub communities throughout Chicago, like Chinatown, and in California they have Japanese town, and I realize that there's a Korean section of town, but what I'm concerned with, I guess, is that there might be families coming to visit their children and then staying here, laying here and playing here, and that's how they're here. I'm also very aware that some of the churches are being turned into apartment complexes, but I'm also very aware that some of the international and national denominations are housing 200 and 300 person Korean churches. We have at least two of those between Champaign and Urbana. So while I'm relating to you, my supervisor in the force, these things that I'm noticing and observing, I am getting somewhat concerned about how do we liaison with Homeland Security so that we are making sure that not only is our food safe for the young men and women who pay a huge tuition to be on our campus, but our local people are safe from the possibilities of either a townie who's impoverished or an international student who's wealthy taking advantage of our shops our money, 
and the abatement of taxes. I'd like to also make the note that we, of course, just got a new pot shop on campus at First and Green, and that's concerning to me because I'm not totally up on the laws on that, and I definitely have seen an impact already in what that is doing to people. We also have at least four alcohol shops run predominantly by uh, Middle Eastern Indians on campus, and what I've noticed is that they may not fully be to fire code because of how high they stack the beverages and the, the uh, boxes and whatnot. And are we really trying to encourage alcoholism in underage drinkers? So I'm wondering how we should handle that. I'm also recognizing that on campus, several high-rises went in to development and completed themselves all during the time of COVID when state laws were saying nobody should have been working. And I'm recognizing that on some of the buildings, they may not be up to actual safety or security codes and some of them are fucking high. And my understanding is one of them has a swimming pool on top of the building. And most kids may not be familiar with the closer you get to the sun, the more you'll get sunburned, but also we have these windows that someone could get... Well, I guess you get my drift. So if you wouldn't mind mulling all that information over that I picked up in walking my beat and driving my route and help me to understand what we do because at some point we sometimes get called to these places and we have to go and it's no longer just fraternity boys and sorority girls that are sort of you know out of line and having a good time it's people from a foreign land that we don't understand their culture we don't understand their society we don't understand their motivation of being here and opening the university has sort of put us at risk for that <laughs>